Greetings, peace, and blessings. Welcome to my channel. I'm Giovanna Tisdale. I am a healer. I'm a mother, a creator, a priestess, and I'm really excited to share with you a review of a deck that has been on my wish list for a very long time, and um, I actually treated myself to it today. I haven't even opened it. Um, I did take it out of the original packaging, but just looking at the guidebook, it's phenomenal. And I felt like I just wanted to share my experience with you. This is the, I'll show all the, the packaging just, just for fun. So this is the Chrysalis Tarot. It's the deck and book set. Um, so inside the cute little box here was the deck that had the cards in it that I clearly took out. I'm going to share a tip uh, because tuck boxes are not my favorite because oftentimes, depending on how they're made, they rip. So what I do is I put tape um, across this part of the box and then I do the same thing to the bottom also. And that kind of just reinforces it and keeps them lasting a little bit longer. Uh, I had a deck that got wet and wound up having to do that too because the box started kind of disintegrating because um, it's just paper. So yay. Also included was this cute um, poster of their spread, which I haven't fully looked at, but I will share it. So it's the Chrysalis Fairy Ring spread. Um, it's also, I believe, in the guidebook. And then these are the cards still in the plastic, which I will open up in a bit. So let me make a little bit more space. I rearranged a few things on my makeshift desk and um, just want to make sure we've got enough space to do all the things. So this is the book that came with the set. It's pretty chunky. And I started reading it, it's 216 pages. Um, I had to pull out my pen and started like highlighting some things in there because just so much of what's written and just, just the introduction and forward alone really resonated. And I'm in love with this deck and I haven't even looked at the cards. And I'm pretty sure that it's going to be one of those very emotional connections with this deck, um, similar to the Lightseers. Being a healer, knowing that there's so many healing elements and just the way that this um, deck was woven together with a lot of different um, traditions and things it, it just i'm excited so bear with me we might be here for a minute but i promise it's it's gonna be fun so um this is deck 350 i believe and i'm really excited and proud about this one coming into my collection like i said it has been on my wish list for quite some time and it just was something that i never because there were always other decks <laughs> but um last month i actually went to a local shop here of course i had to find the metaphysical shop as soon as i touched down and um I was choosing between this deck and the New Vision Tarot. And at that time, I went with the New Vision deck. And so I went back today and I got to meet the owner of the shop. He is such a beautiful person. I can't wait to meet him again. And I got to play with his dog, Pillow. It was just a perfect kismet moment. Um, so I went ahead and picked up the Chrysalis. And what I love about it is, first of all, the back of the cards really just just really warmed me up. To me, this looks like a portal. And then we have the butterflies that have emerged out of the chrysalis with their beautiful colors and their wings open. Um, and again, like I really love how the deck backs, like I never thought of this before, but how the backs allow you to like either have it reversed and you don't know which way just reminded me of the um, so above as below. And I don't know. I just, I've spent so much time just looking at the back of this deck. I think it is just so beautiful. I love the, the spiral colors, the color of the water, the intricate details of the butterflies. I really feel like I'm going to love the artwork in this deck. So yay. I can't wait to open them. I'm trying to be patient. 
what I love about this is it talked about some principles that really resonate with me, what I call spiritual love. Um, they were calling like holistic consciousness being a form of higher consciousness where it's love based, like out of unconditional love for self, for neighbor, for earth and cosmos. So love for everything, that pure essence of really recognizing the divine and everyone and everything. And that to me is a generalization of what spiritual love is um, and what they call holistic consciousness. And then they touched on both and and the way that, you know, we are shifting paradigms and just so many other amazing things in the book. So they have the first part broken into different chapters. Um, first is Papa Legba's Unseen Travels. Then it's Merlin's Great Matter, um, Storyteller's Vision Quest. And then there is the Morgan's Cauldron of Rebirth. Um, and then it goes into the definitions of each of the cards. And it has a black and white um, print of each card in the deck that is actually one of, I think, the first drafts. So it's not going to not may not necessarily be the same as what's seen on the card. And I thought that was really beautiful and intentional because the thought behind it is that you get to see the transformation, which is what happens inside of the chrysalis. Right. There's. Um, sort of change, transformation, rebirth that happens, and you get to see that process. So I thought that was very interesting and fascinating. Um, I'm definitely going to read this book. I want to finish reading it this evening, but I wanted to come share my thoughts before it got too late. <laughs> and um, I didn't want to be up too late. I have a busy day um, tomorrow, so I'm really grateful for that. Okay, so some of the chapters aren't super duper long. Okay. And also, I like that their, um, their court cards, let me see, what did they call them? The tropes, I believe it was, but that they are also archetypes. And um, I look forward to, yeah, the troop um, and the court cards were renamed. And I think they all have different archetypes. So that is going to be amazing to see. So in addition, so in the guidebook, um, the artist shares her uh, um, intentions behind the artwork, as well as there is a page that describes each of the cards. And there's, um, let's see, yeah, there's a lot of information. So it's about a page and a half for each of the, each of the cards and those were the minors, let's see. And the same for the majors. So it's a good amount of information here. Definitely will be reading that. Um, okay, so let me open these babies up. Hang on, I need a little bit of assistance. I'm really excited to um, share reviews. Uh, I have was checking my other channel, my old channel, and saw I had some comments there that I had not um, seen because I have not really been active there or on social media in general. And so one of the things that I shared in one of the comments, um, there was a video on, I think it was like the Green Witch Tarot or something, and the volume was not that great. And I was like, oh no, that video is like four years old, by the way. Um, but I do intend on, when my deck is collection is back together, going back through each one and, and doing a review because it will be like having a brand new, multiple brand new decks all over again. So I've got the plastic off. So inside we've got the little white book. Um, so this deck was created by Tony Brooks and the artwork by Holly Sierra. It's a U.S. Games deck. I think this one was published in 2016, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know when the original was published. Um, but yeah, so let's see. So it gives a little introduction, and then it goes straight into the card meanings. And from what I can see, most of the cards have new or different names, I should say. And so they do have a spread included. Nice. So we've just got the information card 
So fun thing. So what I do with some of these when they have like the extra cards, I will um, use these as art in my goddess book. And I have a lot of fun kind of putting them together. So I usually keep those and repurpose them. There is a card that talks about the, um, the creator and the artist. Okay, now to the cards. So one of the things I noticed is the border. I like that it's not white because it almost um, just expands the image in a way. It's not as obnoxious sometimes as how the white border can be. So it kind of extends the art without extending it. It just adds a little bit of vibrancy and detail. I'm considering possibly edging the deck. If I do, it'll probably be either I'm thinking blue. I think blue would be really nice. So here we have, instead of the fool, we have the hero, which is Merlin. Merlin the magician. I was just looking at Merlinite today too when I was in the shop. So that's the hero card. Oh wow. So for the magician, we have ravens. Let me see. And then we have the high priestess or sorceress. I really love the art and the detail. The artwork is really, really beautiful. So pretty. We have Gaia, the Empress. And she's holding a bird. There are feathers. There's a little mouse there, eggs, peacock feather, a snail. We've got, I think those are holly berries. I see some oak, cactus, butterfly is there too, the lotus flower, grape. Oh, this is so beautiful. So many different elements of earth are included in this card. And we have Green Man as the emperor. I really love the nature-based theme. Um, as a shamanic practitioner, that really speaks to me. And I think that's one of the things when I was reading the guidebook where I was like, oh gosh, I want to open these. But um, I really wanted to share in my excitement about these wow so this is interesting for the hierophant we have the divine child that's really really interesting and i kind of think of it too because children are usually like innocent and more connected um because life hasn't warped them in a sense right and so they have that that innocence, that connection, and that curiosity, and that um, appreciation of everything. Everything is new and exciting to them. So that's really, really beautiful. And in their hair, you can see the sun and the moon. They're holding a palette. There are flowers and butterflies. There's a candle there as they sit in the clamshell, and a little frog dragonflies such beautiful beautiful artwork i am so grateful that i have this deck all right and then we have the lovers i like that there are animals included right there's bird sheep rabbit deer i love deer cat um, that kind of looks like Merlin. Yeah, that's Merlin because the mustache is curled up. But it's almost like this deeper sense of love that goes beyond like physical. It's like that spiritual love that we were just talking about. And then you have the tree back there. You've got the sun and the moon. That's so, so beautiful. The roots of the tree going down. There's just like a deep respect in this card and just happiness. Look at the, the sheep smiling there. Just 
and complete bliss. I love that. Oh, then we have Erne the Hunter for the Chariot. And so one of the things about this deck, if you haven't noticed already, there are different, um, I guess, deities, mythological figures that are used. Um, and there's Ma'at for justice. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And then the hermit is storyteller. I like that this is like an elder woman and it's almost like um, she's sharing the wisdom that she has gathered throughout her life. And I don't know why, but I feel like there's like this energy of the Phoenix rising coming out of it, even though I don't see the Phoenix rising. That's what it feels like for me. And here we have the Wheel of Fortune or the wheel. Papa Legba for strength. Celtic Owl, the hangman. Aradine for death. beautiful golden flower for temperance how beautiful is that like the rainbow fish and the butterflies and then there's these two urns there it's almost like each butterfly represents a different like season or cycle it's a blue one a green one a yellow one a brown one orange one I can't wait to see what those represent. And I love sunflowers. I think that is just so beautiful. I can't wait to like read and understand like the, the symbolism and get to know some of these beautiful beings. Look at the little dragon there for Bella Rosa as the devil. I like that it's a masked figure. They're wearing a mask, glove, like very ornately dressed. Like you don't know who they are and that the mirror is reflecting outward as well. That's interesting to me. And then we have Kali for the tower. Oh, this is beautiful. Elope, Elke for the star. And the moon. Oh, the sun is shedding a tear. Oh, Phoenix. <laughs> Phoenix for judgment. Beautiful. That is so beautiful. I'm going to keep this to the side because I want to look at that card some more. And then for the world, there is Psyche. These are so colorful and intricate. Look at all the grapes. Looks like, are those robin eggs or are those planets on her shawl? Like everything feeds into one another. It's like she's standing on top of the sun or on top of the sunflower. All right, so we've got stones, which I'm thinking are possibly pentacles. Mirrors look like cups for the suits. Um, then we've got spirals and scrolls. And then I think the troops, which are the courts, come last. So I'll set those there. So I will briefly go through. So we've got the Ace of Stones. This is a deck that I'm definitely going to want to study. The Two of Stones. Look at the bear. 
the three of stones. I'm really loving all the nature elements in this deck. And then we've got the four of stones. Oh, look at the five. Oh my gosh, I don't know why that just like speaks to me so heavily. Then we've got the six of stones. The seven. We've got the eight. How beautiful that is. The nine. And the ten. Oh, I love the crystals in that card. And then we have mirrors. This is the ace. I love how the water is flowing. Is it flowing out or flowing in? <laughs> it's like a looking glass, a magic mirror, and it's under the sea. You can see there's the turtle. There's some fish in there. Coral. Look at the two of mirrors, how beautiful. The swans. And there's the three of mirrors, the lion and the lamb. <laughs> the four of mirrors, I love the mermaid. This I think is absolutely beautiful, the five of mirrors. This almost feels like protection, right? Because mirrors can be used to reflect things back out. Like even um, in the devil card, we saw that the mirror was facing outwardly. So if you were um, being sent um, negative energy or something, you can use the mirror to reflect that back to the sender. I think that is so beautiful. And she's holding the load. That is that is beautiful. And there's the six. The pools of water there. Look at the hummingbird. And then we have the seven of mirrors. The eight. I love this because it's like you're walking away and if you try to turn back, it's like you have to look at yourself and remember why you're walking away. And oops, I just knocked all my cards down. Sorry. And um, sometimes like, especially leaving a relationship that, you know, you've been in for who knows how long or, you know, someone or something that you had to walk away from that you truly cared about. That is hard. And sometimes you have to remind yourself why you cannot go back. Like, okay, like, yes, I might care. Like, I might have really wanted this to work. But the reason why I'm moving forward is because of this. I'm moving forward for my peace. And this, this really speaks to me in so many ways because that is what I've had to do in my own life and really remind myself why I'm walking away from someone. Oh, this is so cute too. The nine of mirrors. I like how they took these cards that are more challenging or what, you know, are considered like the scary cards and they are really just making them so beautiful. But this I think is so fun. Look at them just playing. <laughs> the water is it's raining. We've got the sunflowers and they're just, this feels like so much joy. Fullness. I love it. And then we've got the Ten of Mirrors. May all that you desire be reflected back to you. And we've got the Ace of Spirals with the Ram. Almost looks like he's crying. And then there's the Two of Spirals. Are those raspberries? I believe they are. The Three. How beautiful is that? And we've got the four of spirals. I like too how the spirals are different in each card. Like this one. Oh my God, I love it. The dragon. 
Oh, I love it. And then we have the six of spirals. Look at those prayer flags. <laughs> the bears peeking out, seven of spirals. Oh. Then we've got the eight of spirals. We have the nine of spirals. The 10, look at him going over the crossroads. And we come to the scrolls, we got the ace, the two, look at the pegasus. Oh, look at the fox weeping for the three of scrolls. I love the purple, there's the four. the five of scrolls i'm gonna check in the book to see which oh my god look at the elephant oh this yeah i love this car i'm gonna keep this one out too the six of scrolls so here we have the seven eight Got the nine. Oh my God, I love this too. Ooh, this reminds me of the, those memes that were going around where it showed like, um, gosh, I forget, but it was like um, somebody like smoking and their hair is all frazzled. And it's like um, my guardian angels after um, I, you know, don't master the lesson or miss the message again or something like that. And then we have the Ten of Scrolls. Mm. Oh, that one I need to keep out too. because That one, that one did something for me too. But I do feel like the scrolls are connected with the suit of swords. But let's look in the bookie book and see. What was I looking for? Oh, yes. Okay, so stones represent earth. So that's going to be your pentacles. Mirrors represent feelings, emotions, water. So that would be a cup. Spirals would be fire, energy, and spirit. And then scrolls would be intellect, intuition, air. So they are aligned with elements. I love it. Um, okay, so I want to look at, I think first the Six of Scrolls, because that one, mm, that is such a beautiful card. So I'm going to read what the artist says about the card, and I'll hold it up so you can look at it while I'm reading. I love elephants. This card's keyword, consolation, provided me the opportunity to feature one of these enchanting and noble creatures. I rarely choose to press my beliefs on others, but animal rights, and in particular those of elephants, are dear to my heart. A wonderful woman named Lek Chilert and the elephants in her wildlife park served as my inspiration for this painting. Lek has received great acclaim for her tireless work. She is the founder of the Elephant Nature Park in Chiang Mai, where so many animals have found refuge. During the years I painted Chrysalis, I followed Lek's journey, her triumphs and tragedies through internet posts. Chrysalis Tarot is all about growth and healing. There's a need, a great need, to address these issues when considering man's relationship with animals. Our deck seemed a marvelous vehicle within, within which to subtly offer this message. This the fairy is consoling the elephant, and in return, he offers her a confirming message of thanksgiving. And I feel that, like, looking at the elephant, there's almost, like, a sense of sadness. And we know how wise elephants are. Um, wow. So this is about spiritual consolation. 
Mm. That is so beautiful. So beautiful. Okay, next I'm going to peek at the Phoenix. Which... Oops, just passed it. The Phoenix appears, and here's the Phoenix. At the point in the hero's journey when only a little work remains, the time has come for the archetypal act of self-judgment. You have forgiven yourself, your parents, and anyone else in need of your forgiveness. This doesn't mean that whatever transgressions were committed against you are suddenly okay. It means that you are prepared to set yourself free and move on. Ooh, I love it. You perform difficult shadow work. You can now acknowledge your dark side and admit your human imperfections. Rather than project these imperfections onto others, you integrated them into your psyche. It is no longer fractured or shattered, but whole. You accepted yourself as you are. You are self-empowered. The phoenix is the ageless sacred firebird, the primordial and multicultural symbol of immortality. She is the penultimate symbol of the authentic self in Chrysalis Tarot. The phoenix is definitely an archetype very close to my heart, and that's why that card came out for me. Um, yeah. Oh, we are not done. Hold on. I forgot about the, the courts. So I want to take a peek at the nine of scrolls and then we will keep it pushing. So this is about not mal despair. despair. It's not about suffering long term despair, depression. It's about renewal and the spiritual rewards of emptying prompted by suffering. Yeah, like when I see this, it's almost like if you would just listen to the messages that I'm trying to convey, if you would just, just listen to your intuition, consult with your spiritual guides, like, come on, we are here to help you. We keep trying to send all these messages and you're just not picking them up. And it feels like they're just like, oh, come on. <laughs> but of course, they're not going to give up. The Nine of Scrolls asks the question, what does destiny require of me? By definition, retrieving your higher self is your destiny. Destiny always plants new seeds of hope during the darkest night. Okay, so let's take a peek at the troops. Here we have the minstrel. He is the king of stones. Look at his doggy. We have the artiste the queen of stones i absolutely love this as an fellow artiste the illusionist oh look at the acrobat you have the sojourner for the king of mirrors the watcher Queen of Mirrors. So it's like they already have their archetype and they're living it out. I like that they're not like necessarily like crowned. Um, like these are people. Then we have the Dreamer. I love that card. Oh, the Healer. I absolutely love this one too. I'll probably keep that one out. And then we have the Companion, King of Spirals. The Muse, the Corsair, the Knight of Spirals, a little pirate, <laughs> and the parrot there. Oh, look at this, the Mime, Page of Spirals, with the Ram. And then we have the Poet, the King of Scrolls, there with the Rabbit. And then we have the Weaver. I want to go back and look at a few of these. I think all of them do have an animal archetype with them. And then we have the Visionary, the Knight of Scrolls, and the Pilgrim or Page of Scrolls. I said I wanted to take a peek at 
So the artist of this card says, this is one of my very favorite cards. I chose Honeybee for our healer's animal companions. Honey has amazing medicinal properties. Yes, yes, yes. And I'm a great lover of bees and old fashioned straw scabs. As for the healer herself, there is a marvelous medicine woman in the enchanted Gila Canyon wilderness of New Mexico who was the inspiration for this card. She and her family practically live off the land and offer spiritual retreats in their stunning, beautiful sanctuary. Gila Canyon is truly an ancient place of healing and power. Our chrysalis healer is known as a bee maiden, a practitioner of the ancient and sacred art of bee shamanism. Her distant ancestors in India were known as the mountain Hermne, wandering healers who practice medicine using roots, herbs, and magical incantations. Their secrets have been passed down from grandmother to granddaughter for generations. To the herbal remedy practices taught by her ancestors, the healer adds the medicinal secrets of the hive, pollen, propolis, wax, and of course, honey. Bee shamans can expertly position the bee sting on the body's energy meridians as a type of acupuncture. In fact, the art of bee shamanism is the forerunner of acupuncture. The healer frequently quotes from a poem by Antonio Machado. I dreamt, marvelous era, that I had a beehive here inside my heart and the whole golden bees were making white combs and sweet honey from my old failures. Ooh, that is not beautiful and sweet. There is so much for me to explore in this beautiful deck. Um, Again, super grateful to have added it to my collection. It definitely speaks to me in a number of different ways. And I look forward to reading with it really soon. I actually have, I'm trying to think what oracles that I have on hand would go. Oh, actually, you know what? These would be pretty with like an orange, possibly or red border make all the other colors pop I don't know I might edge these I might not though because it's so I don't know we will see but yeah I'm trying to think what oracle decks I would pair with this to work with um hmm. I'm not sure I don't know if I have, I know I have, um, I do have some more box that I haven't taken out. So I might peek through there and see, um, and maybe I'll do a separate video sharing some of the decks that, um, I'm going to use with this deck. Definitely would like something earth-based. I have the wisdom of the sacred bee, so that might be a good one. Um, yeah. This deck is absolutely gorgeous and I'm grateful to be able to work with it. I've got a few more things that I need to do. I want to finish reading this this evening, um, going back, looking at the cards with a little more detail and then doing my little um, deck connection and cleansing ritual just to kind of make it mine. And yeah, I'm really grateful that I got to share this with you. Um, if you work with this deck or have, you know, have this in your collection, let me know what oracles you choose to pair it with if you do so, um, how you find it works in your practice, any interesting things that you've noticed from working with it. Um, right now, I've been working with, I can't even think of the name of the deck at the moment. My mind is like so focused on this, but I've been working with a particular deck and oracle um, this month. So I'm going to continue with that so I don't get sidetracked, but this deck is absolutely gorgeous. I'm not sure what took me so long to add it to my collection, <laughs> but I'm really grateful to have it. I've got my eye on another um, limited edition deck, so hopefully I will be able to add that one to my collection as well, but um yeah, that one is like a really, really like wish listy deck that's a little expensive, but it would absolutely be worth it. Thank you so much. Um, I hope you enjoyed my um, 
unboxing and I guess review. Well, let me share a little bit more. So the cards are really flexible, which I think will make for easy shuffling. Um, I'll say it's like a semi satin, like a cross between a satin and a matte. They're very smooth, but not super glossy. Um, and they feel good in my hand. So yeah, I think it's a beautiful, beautiful deck. I love the artwork. I love the colors, the detail of the artwork, the imagery, the different symbolisms, um, the different cultural references. Yeah, I, I, um, I like it a lot. <laughs> All right, that is it for today. Thank you so much. I look forward to our next time together. And um, yeah, I've got a lot more in store. Someone asked a question um, about getting into tarot and being Christian. So I'm going to do a video about that, answering some of their questions and sharing some of their insight, which will probably be about a little bit more too about me sharing my journey into working with um, tarot specifically, these different divination tools. And yeah. I'm excited. I'm so glad I got to do this today and I don't want to go. I want to keep talking, but I'm going to go play with my deck instead. <laughs> All right. If you have any questions, um, leave a comment, let me know, and I'll see you next time. Peace.